Calvin, let's start uh, by talking about the news today, obviously, that um, the government have paused, we'll say paused, the, the fans coming back in in October. What's your kind of first reactions to that? Uh, I, think, I think overall, I think football's reaction is disappointing. Um, you know, tough to understand a little bit, um, you know, but we don't have the full scientific information that the government do. So, you know, we have to give them some sort of credit. But I think, I think the pilots have gone very well. Um, and I think that's probably where football's frustration is. is, is but, we un but we also understand it probably doesn't look right for the government to, to be putting in additional restrictions and then suddenly go, you know, but we can have people coming into to, to football stadiums or sports stadiums. Um, so, so we've had we'd we'd done a lot of work, James, Avril, and um, and the, the the safety advisory group have done a tremendous amount of work to get ready for this weekend because we'd actually applied for a one of the for the trial games, um, and we hadn't had news whether we'd been picked or not. But we'd done all the work and we're ready to go uh, if needed because we you know we want to get fans back in as soon as possible. Uh, I think the word coming down from government to to, to Football league clubs and Premier League clubs is a, it is only a pause at the moment, and they're gonna it's going to be reviewed. And I think there is a tremendous pressure from all the authorities to to make sure that review is 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 ongoing. Um, and I think in a strange way, while I think it will have a it has a bit of a short term impact, I think some of the conversation is around it might have a uh, a, a medium to longer term benefit in in such that if if by taking these measures over the next couple of weeks that, that, that the numbers do get under control better, then what it might mean is we might get to bigger numbers within the ground quicker um, than possibly through the trial process that we were going through. So it's all going to be about how, how the numbers react. Um, we've seen it a little bit here in Florida. We had a uh, a month ago, you know, people probably saw it. We, we were technically the epicenter of COVID in America, and there was the cases were going up. But what they found was, whilst the cases were going up, the hospitalizations and the deaths didn't go up to the level that that was potentially predicted. So, um, I think the cases going up was normal, and, and here in Florida, especially, they they kept quite calm in terms of the governance of, of the state, and they said, no, we. We feel strong in what we're doing, so, and it and it's definitely been proved over the last sort of four weeks that the hospitalizations and the deaths um, uh, numbers sort of sort sort of didn't go up as high or as quickly, and uh, and uh, and actually are now going down again. So um, there is there is you know there is I, I've seen it here that there is the positive way out of this, and you know, but it all comes back down to you know we've got to make sure we're. We, we follow the guidelines and uh, make sure that we get we get um, sorry we get clubs in we get fans in when we can. And you mentioned a minute ago about the kind of the sh the short term impact and the potentially long term benefits of when the appetite builds and fans come back in. But just from the short term, what what financially what does it mean for you? to potentially not have any fans in over the, the next couple of months? I know that's a bit hypothetical because we don't know how it's going to work, but just just on, on that basis, what does it mean for the cobblers? Uh, well, obviously, it, it's going to have an impact. We haven't actually looked at in detail yet because um, it's just sort of happened today. And uh, I know James has been doing some work on it. it. It's going to have an impact. Every game that goes by without fans in, it's lost income. Um, and a lot of it is we, we've got to make sure that, that you know, we've got season ticket holders that, that are, are not going to be able to get in as quickly as we would have liked. Uh, we're not, we don't know what that impact is. Um, we know that, you know, we are offering season ticket holders, you know, I follow for free and, and, and a lot, most season ticket holders are taking, taking up that, taking up that offer. So they're seeing games, etc. So, but we're going to have to review that on an ongoing basis. Um, We've had a lot of response from season ticket holders that have said that you know they bought their season ticket on the premise that they, they might not get into games you know for the season and and not to worry you know probably had a couple of people say that you know what's going to happen and ask the question what's going to happen which is legitimate we're not you know we won't back away or shy away from anything we just got to review what happens and we've got to understand what the timing is um and and when we can get fans back in the ground i you know, I've always been, 
one to say I don't it will never be it's not as bad as 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 uh, as it always looks straight away it's not I don't I'm relatively confident that we are going to get fans in the ground um, I have been you know at some point this season and maybe sooner rather than later but it's tough to to feel that way after today's sort of announcements and and I think everyone's feeling a bit a bit sore on that so but we're not going to rush to anything we're just going to keep you know we're going to keep in touch with the EFL and the government in terms of what the recommendations are and and look at um and, and but you know everyone knows I think everyone knows that our preference is to get people in the ground as, as quickly as as is safe to do so just away from the fans then um and I saw you've been having some meeting with the trusts of course mainly talking about the stand uh, and you seem to have you're butting heads a little bit for a while but you seem to have come to a, a bit more of a consensus recently uh, yeah um uh, i i think I, we had some very positive meetings um uh, with the trust um uh, and a lot of discussion happened uh, it, you know in that time and then the trust spoke you know uh, themselves during that time and, and and they went through their own process and and it was good because I think what it did, it, it you know, the trust have been able to to see everything. It's all on the table, um, you know, and and we've shown them why we think it, what we're what we're proposing is in the best interest of the football club, and and uh, it's great that the trust, as a board, uh, I think unanimously uh, agreed that it was in the best interest of the football club. So that's you know that's pleasing. It doesn't get us everywhere in terms. Of we still need to you know uh, work this out with the council, but it does. What it does do for us is it shows that you know we're working in the best interest of the club. It you know and 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 it highlights that. I think we'll you know over the next sort of period of time we'll we'll try and maybe talk to the council about what we can release publicly and what we can't and uh, and discuss that and and hopefully get some more information out into the wider fan base as well. Um, but this now gives us a bit more confidence that as a club we're you know we're we're talking as one voice and. Um, and we're trying to get something done that will benefit. And and I think, you know, this this it's an important time for the club now in terms of COVID and and the impact that COVID would have. And and it's a you know it could be a good time to 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 really you know push forward on a, on a deal that that could benefit the club, you know, in the, over the next sort of you know three to five years, um, and if not longer. So so it it. it it really is, you know, it's imperative that we can really push on and get with that. And, uh, and you know, we've, we've had good conversations with the council as well. And uh, we're just waiting for them to come back, us, back, with, back to us with, a, with a, a response to our sort of offer. Um, and uh, we're hoping that's this week. And then we can, we can sit down again after that and, and, and talk a bit further. So, so, you know, very positive, I think, the relation. And I think the good thing... Good thing for, for us as well and, and and we had some takeaways from the discussion as well and we've got to accept responsibility as well and uh and we, we our ongoing communication needs to be better and it's, it's like any sort of relationship where you know that i think if we can communicate better it'll be positive for us all so i think um i'm looking forward to that and gareth and james and, and david was involved in some of the conversation as well we're all looking forward to to, to that being positive going forward as well. Uh, just away from that then, back onto the on-field stuff. Um, milestones coming up, I suppose today is obviously 10 years since the Cobblers went and beat Liverpool and very shortly it will be two years since you appointed Keith Curl. Um, the club in a very different position on the pitch from back then, aren't they? I mean, as a, as a chairman and as an owner, it's uh, with hindsight looks pretty inspired that, uh, that appointment. What, Samo's appointment or Keith's appointment? Yeah, yeah. So I've seen Samo all over social media today. But fair play. To, I'll, I'll touch on that first. Uh, fair play. That was a, would have been, obviously, we weren't involved. But what an incredible achievement and what, a, what an incredible night. Sorry. Turn this off. Um, yeah, what an incredible achievement. Incredible night. And... Uh, Fair play to Ian, and it's great to have Samo involved in the. I've always had a great relationship with Ian, and great to have him involved in the club. So, and, and I'm sure he's enjoying his his. Uh, I won't call it newfound fame, but the the uh, <laughs> the uh, he's, you know he's a club legend, and uh, um, 
and so pleased for that. So, and then moving on to Keith, I think Keith's done a great job. You know, I think uh, in terms of um, in terms of everything that he's done, he's come into he came into a club that that we weren't doing so well on the pitch. Uh, he came into a group of players that were on the way down rather than on the way up, um, and he's changed it. He's changed the mentality. He's changed the um, you know the, the the thought process and and. And I think, Saturday, you know, it's interesting what happened on Saturday, especially because I think we obviously stepped up a level and, you know, he's changed some of the players around and, and, um, and, he, and we lost, you know, we've got a lot out injured. We lost a couple of players just before the, um, the game on Saturday. And I think we went into that game with, 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 with little expectation. And, uh, and, and, and he got a result. And he got a result in very difficult circumstances. And I think... It's testament to the way that he runs the, the playing department and, uh, and, and it's what we've talked about quite a lot and especially over COVID and I think it's going to be just as important over the next the rest of the season is, he's, you know, we just get on with things and uh, we get on with it and that's one thing with Keith, you know, as I said, uh, as I've said before, it's very interesting with Keith because he's not, he's not always desperate for players. He'd rather work with what he's got um, and uh, he's, um, he's, you know, we, it's funny that managers, some, when you work with a manager, doesn't necessarily always want to spend money. Um, and, and, you know, when, when there's money available and you, you say, look, you know, you almost want him to buy somebody or want him to, to mm-hmm. sign a player, but he's very, very strong and relaxed about it, but he wants to make sure he brings the right players into the club that are going to fit into his environment. And, um, and, and, and that's definitely a, a skill and, uh, and, and, I'm, and I'm really pleased with how he's done and, and hopefully we can continue that now. It's been a good start to the season, but we're not getting carried away. We've got, we've got tougher times ahead. We've got bigger games um, to play and, and, you know, again, it's like on Saturday, we may be missing players, but I think Keith's start really, you know, proved his worth and, and, and as a group and as a staff and as a, as a playing department, I'm, I'm, we're, we're, we're pretty pleased with what's going on right now. Yeah, and I mean, just the final one on on Keith because two years it it feels like a, it feels like an, a lifetime ago at the minute because of the year we've had, but it's a really short time in football. And the actual we can and we can be fans and journalists as well. We can be accused of being a bit short term, looking back at results over the last three weeks. But that position when he came in, he was. I suppose the, the job was to just make sure you stay in, in the football league and then fast forward a, a season and a half and you're you're in League One. I mean you're you're in the you're you're seventh. I mean you played two games, but you've had a very good start to a League One season as well. It's it really is a quite a quite impressive turnaround. Yeah, absolutely. I think when you add you know, you add in, you know, you, you, I know we got we uh we got beat at Bristol, but you know, you add in, you know, you beat Cardiff in the cup, um and even last season, you know, you get to the the fourth round of the cup, long, you know, you, you you identify, you develop a player during the season, and then you know we sell, we're able to sell him for a club record fee. Um, you know, you add in all those kind of things, and and even even you know you talk about I don't know. I think Gareth said something. There was 120 appearances from 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 the academy and education, and you look at that and and. Uh, you know, and those are the things you look for in a manager, don't you? You look for in a manager that will win football matches. You've got you have a professional group, um, and uh, and, um, and 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 you know, give youth a chance to, to you know to progress to see a progression through through the through the system. Yeah, excellent, brilliant. That's that's all for me. Thanks, Kevin. Kevin, just on. Um on the COVID situation, there's been a lot of talk about a potential rescue package or, or some kind of financial help from the Premier League. Is that still ha- happening, do you think? I think so. Um, I, th- I think the, there's been some discussion around that. I think we've got a meeting with the EFL next week, a divisional meeting next week. And I think that will be a bit more of a topic, especially with today's news. Um, I think uh, I think it, it, it will sharpen the focus. I, you know, I think that the EFL have done quite a lot of stuff and, and, and even the government have done quite a lot of stuff in terms of cash flow and helping clubs with, um, 
you know, not paying everything at the at, at the time it was due in terms of VAT and and etc. And the furlough scheme, and whilst the furlough scheme is is coming to an end, it doesn't affect football clubs as much as it did, you know, before the season started. Now that the season started, you know, we we can't take advantage of the furlough scheme as much anyway. So if that extends, it won't have as much of an impact for for football uh, as for other businesses. And and I think there's a lot of talk of that extending anyway and if it does great but um you know but but i think there is a lot of discussion around from the government for premier league from the football league in terms of what does happen with football and because the reality is and i said this last year you know last season we missed four games worth of income and and that has a, a major impact uh, but it was all about what happens next year all about you know when can we get crowds in next year and, and the, being this year and uh, that was always going to be the question. And if we're, you know, we're a bit further out than October, then you know we've got some, cha- we'll have some challenges. And it, and it is going to be challenging for clubs. You know, I think um, we've all had to show cash flows to to the football league. And I think the view was that you know, in through October, we 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 should be okay. Most clubs should be okay. Um, but uh, the 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 when October hits, you know, it, it definitely is going to be a bit more of a challenge for for clubs and and uh, what we do going forward. So I think there's a lot of talk around the rescue, uh, some sort of rescue package, and and hopefully that will get you know firmed up pretty soon. Yeah, and, and just finally, yeah, uh, you mentioned about the, the the transfer market and Keith Kerr signing play signed ten players so far, but I'm guessing from what he said that there's still room in the budget for two or three more over the final couple of weeks of the window. Two or three? Well, I'm not sure why he said that. No, um, no there's definitely, I think, um, from our discussion, I think it's. Get, it, I think there's going to be, uh, our budget is set up so that um, uh, I think there's a defender and a forward, I think, that we're looking at still. Um, yeah. You know, one of the things, one of the challenges that I think football's going to face and, and doesn't necessarily affect us as much because we'd, we'd, we'd set our budget up in a, in a way that, that accommodated this. Uh, some clubs would have been making decisions on signing players based on players, you know, going out as well. And I think if, if, if the, anything below League Two doesn't start up, then that, that's going to put, that's going to, you know, League One and League Two clubs are going to face challenges in, in some of those players going somewhere. Um, so we haven't got we you know we haven't got we haven't got a massive squad. Um, we got quite tight, and there are, but there are a couple of players that will probably, if we get the you know we'll, we'll probably struggle for playing time, and 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 they may ask you know to to go, but that's going to be a bit more of a challenge, um, you know, with clubs you know not being able to go, and players not being able to go into non-league. So. That will have an impact. I don't know how much it will impact us, but it will definitely impact some other League One and League Two clubs for sure. Yeah. But, okay. Yeah, Thank so, you. But, but we've got, you know, there's 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 money in the budget, and and myself and David have talked about it, and we're we, we're we're not changing that even based on today's news. So um, we're you know we're we're committed to to seeing that through. Yeah. 